Hi, I'm Wendy Lannon. I am the manager of the community education department here at Exeter Hospital, and I'm also the nurse navigator of Exeter Hospital's lung cancer screening program. I'm John Brennan. I'm a pulmonologist at Exeter Hospital, and I'm, uh, I have an interest in lung cancer and lung cancer screening. We're going to talk to you today about the importance of screening for lung cancer in high-risk patients. Uh, lung cancer is the, uh, still the most common cause of cancer deaths in the United States, and traditionally it presents at a later stage, which uh, leads to a poor prognosis. A lot of cancers in the lung, they don't have any symptoms until uh, they're fairly advanced. Uh, we know that the two big risk factors are smoking and age, especially the accumulated uh, years of smoking. And there's been a, a number of trials studying screening with a once once a year low radiation dose CAT scan of the chest to screen for lung cancers when they're at an early stage. They present as a, a, a spot in the lung, a pulmonary nodule, uh, where they can potentially be cured with surgery. Sometimes they can be cured even with uh, radiation therapy. Eligibility right now for uh, lung cancer screening is people that are age 55 to 80 with a 30 pack year smoking history. Uh, that pack years means approximately a pack per day for a total of 30 years. And when someone's quit for 15 years, uh, they're no longer eligible because the risk uh, decreases so much. There's some new guidelines from the uh, U.S. Preventative uh, Service Task Force that's likely going to lower that age from uh, 55 to start screening at age 50 and lowering the pack year from 30 to 20. So that's likely uh, coming down the road. Right, right. And, you know, I think it's, it's also important to know with the eligibility criteria that patients have to meet all of the different criteria. So it's not you can be a certain age range, but if you don't meet the pack year history designation that Dr. Brennan mentioned, then you're not eligible. So it's important, just it bears repeating, that um, the current guidelines are age 55 to 80. If you're a Medicare beneficiary, if Medicare is your insurance carrier, the upper age limit right now is 77. And you have to have at least a 30 pack year history of smoking. So 30 is the minimum. Um, so for example, one pack a day for 30 years, right. two packs a day for 15 years at the very minimum. That's how we calculate pack year history. And again, as Dr. Brennan mentioned, um, current smokers, of course, are eligible. Um, and if you're a former smoker, you have to have quit less than 15 years ago. So each one of those criteria have to be met in order to be screened for lung cancers because that puts you in a high risk category. Um, we also want to make sure that people don't have any signs or symptoms that could suggest that perhaps lung cancer is present because screening is really about early detection. We want to be looking at folks who are not um, showing any symptoms um, to make them eligible for screening. So that's another criterion that would need to be met. Uh, so these uh, guidelines were based on a, a number of studies, but one of the, the major studies, the National Lung Screening Trial, showed that in this group of patients, a once a year CAT scan of the chest reduced the risk of dying from lung cancer by 20% and it reduced the overall risk of dying. Uh, the number we like to talk about is for every thousand patients we screen, it saves three lives. So that's very good data. Yes, it's a very powerful tool. And when we saw the results of the National Lung Screening Trial come out, so many of us in healthcare were very, very excited because we finally had a screening test that could reduce the risk of dying from lung cancer. And so um, hospital and healthcare systems across the country, including ours, um, began to develop and implement lung cancer screening programs. Um, and our Exeter Hospital lung cancer screening program has been in place since April of 2016. And as I mentioned, I'm the nurse navigator for that program, and it's really a team effort where we work across our system with um, folks in our imaging department, with the radiologists who are the physicians who interpret the low-dose chest CTs, our pulmonary team, which includes Dr. Brennan, 
um, our cancer center team, our thoracic surgery team. So it's really a team effort of health professionals working across the system. And it's important to emphasize that lung cancer screening isn't a one and done process. That's why we call it a program. When people enter into the program for their initial screening, we then put them into a particular um, tracking system that I monitor. And so when somebody is due to come back for their annual lung cancer screening, because we want this to be done every year, that's where we get the benefit of um, reducing risk of uh, lung cancer uh, death. Um, I will send out reminders and work with providers to bring people back for their annual screening. And then if we find anything suspicious that requires a follow-up chest CAT scan in, say, three months or six months, depending on the type of finding, then we work as a team to make sure that we're reviewing those images and that um, the full physician team is in agreement with the results. And then we work on, okay, what follow-up does that patient need given their result? And certainly Dr. Brennan can speak more to that because he is directly involved in that process. When a patient has uh, one of these uh, screening CAT scans, they'll get a report. If we do find a spot in the lung, also called a pulmonary nodule, many times these uh, nodules are benign, meaning they're not cancerous, in which case we will follow them at periodic intervals just to make sure they're not growing. If we do discover a patient have a lung cancer, uh, there are, have been a lot of advancements in treatment for lung cancers. Uh, there are uh, minimally invasive surgeries such as robotic surgery, some patients may not be a candidate for surgery, and there are radiation options. Uh, stereotactic body radiation therapy is sometimes done in place of surgery. There are also other advancements if we do discover something more advanced uh, in terms of chemotherapy. There's now immunotherapy that unlocks the patient's immune system to fight the cancer. And then there are some targeted therapies. Uh, some of these cancers are tested for gene mutations called comprehensive genomic profiling, and sometimes there's a targeted medication that may be appropriate for that. Our program has been very successful at the whole reason for being for a lung cancer screening program, and that is to find lung cancers at the earlier stages. And, um, you know, we're very, very proud of that, and we really see the value um, in real life about what this means for patients. Um, when they come into our program, when they meet the eligibility criteria that we outlined, um, and we're able to track them over time, um, the program is doing exactly what it's meant to do, and that is to find lung cancer at its earliest stages, in most cases. So as you listen to this, and if you find that you meet the criteria for uh, lung cancer screening, that you have been a heavy smoker for years and you're still smoking, um, it's really important to know that it's never too late to quit. We know for many years that research shows us that even in the earliest minutes and weeks and months um, of quitting smoking, important changes start to happen in terms of the health and the repair of our body systems. And so if you're thinking about quitting smoking, there are lots of resources in the community, both here at Exeter Hospital and around the state that can help you. For example, there is the New Hampshire Quit Line, uh, Quit Now New Hampshire, which you can dial 1-800-QUIT-NOW to reach that service, or you can go to their website at quitnownh.org and learn about the program and um, enroll there for free. It's free confidential telephone counseling. We have a program here at the hospital called Better Choices, Better Health that can help folks quit smoking as well as manage other chronic conditions. And there are a wealth of other opportunities um, that you can discover that are out in the community that can help you. You don't have to go it alone, um, and you can do it. Um, so we want to emphasize that as important as lung cancer screening is, it's not a substitute for quitting smoking. So if you're thinking about it or you're trying to take action, um, you can call our Exeter Hospital Help Center at 603-580-6668 to get more information, um, and we'd be happy to help you. So if you meet the high-risk eligibility criteria for lung cancer screening, give your primary care provider a call and just let them know that you're interested in talking about lung cancer screening, that you uh, believe that you meet the criteria, and you'd like to sit down and have a conversation with them about that. 
Then they can order a low-dose chest CT, a low-dose chest CAT scan for lung cancer screening for you. And we can set you up in our schedule and get you into the program.